to give you a little bit of a head start, you need to find Zechariah. Now, I'll help you a little bit. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Zechariah is the one right before it, so that makes it a little easier. Or you can just turn to page 1295 in your Bibles, whatever, you, whatever you'd like to do. Now, we're not, we're not going to start there. Just put a marker there. I'll do the same. We'll be back in a little bit. I really was not expecting uh, to teach on this. I can go ahead and tell you the title tonight. It's called Fasting for the Father. <laughs> Fasting for the Father. You know, we just got through finishing the, uh, the series Sermon on the Mount. And Matthew chapter 6 is a, is a part of that. Go ahead and turn to Matthew 6. And um, that's part of the Sermon on the Mount. And I know we've taught on this before, but boy, this thing, when he uncovered this to me just in the last few days, way back in Zechariah, it just hit me in a way that I've never seen it before. So let me actually find the verses. I've got them on my page but in case we need context. So when he gets to this portion of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, he's, he starts talking about uh, three things. First, he starts talking about your alms, so let's say your giving, okay? And then he talks about prayer when you pray. And then he talks about fasting. And on all three of those, he, he makes the point, when you do any of those things, now alms is not exactly the same. It's not wrong for people to see you come up and put your offering in the, in the bucket, you know, during a service. But uh, alms is a little different. That's when you give money to the poor. And uh, I love how Dave would say it. You can't, when you can't improve on it, you just steal Dave's stuff, you know. But Dave would say, you don't want to be like the hypocrites and blow a trumpet. And Dave would go, dun da da dun da 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 dun da da dun da 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 Everybody gather around. I'm about to give some money to the poor. <laughs> aren't I more religious? Aren't I more special than you? Or however Dave would do that, you know. So the, the point, though, these are things that we do to the Father. And what's so interesting, uh, oh, let's see now. If we, but, uh, I don't know if I can do it that quick. In the previous chapter, he says, Let your light so shine that your works may be seen of men. Well, he's sure not talking about these three works. He's, that's the things that we normally do to be seen of men. Okay, giving, you know. Uh, I told somebody the other day who's, who's fasting and doing it right. They're not... They're not, you know, walking in with two-gallon jugs of water. I mean, you pretty well know what's going on when you... <laughs> you know, it says, don't disfigure your face. Well, in other ways, you can carry in two-gallon jugs of water. We kind of... You kind of advertise in your fasting. But this one lady, at just, uh, recent, just this week, uh, I hadn't seen her in a while. And, you know, it's hard to fast. I mean, it's hard not to notice when they're just going away. <laughs> and I said, wow, you know. And, but the purpose is to do it unto the Father. Well, so when he says, let your works so shine that they may be seen of men, he's not talking about giving, he's not talking about prayer, and he's not talking about fasting. What's he really talking about? Well, it would be th things like heal the sick, cast out devil. See, those things should be done publicly. You know? Uh, we're going to come to the place where we don't take people into it. it they, we don't do it here, but Big churches especially, you know, if they would, if somebody needs a devil cast out, they would take them into a separate room because they don't want to, they want to keep everything, quote, seeker friendly. They want to offend anybody or anything. I like how Dave does it, you know, he's, come out. You know, and sometimes they're just, you know, be on the floor. One guy, he slid like a snake coming up behind Dave. You remember that? And this other guy was going to punch Dave in the stomach, you know, come out. You remember that? And Dave said, he's a big guy. And he come right up to me and he was, you know, getting ready to hit Dave in the stomach. And he, you, for y'all that can't see me, how do I describe this? Great big guy comes up to Dave and he's got his arm re re back and he's going to hit Dave in the stomach. And he goes, pink. <laughs> so like, all he could do is pink, barely touch the, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to kill you. Pink. Uh, <laughs> this one time, the, you know, Dave said, come out. You know how Dave does? He'd nonchalantly. Oh, and he starts, you know, cleaning his fingernails and continues to preach. You know, and this guy's foaming at the mouth and flopping like a chicken on the floor. And, and then he gets up and he's got like coming up behind Dave like he's going to do something, you know. And everybody else is like, 
and they would just keep preaching, the end result, those devils would always come out. See, and it's good for that to be seen publicly. It's good to see the power of God. I think the healings are going to be so manifested. When I mean, they're going to come out of the wheelchairs. It's going to be just like uh, the, the, the guy at the gate, uh, the gate Beautiful who was lame. Everybody knew this guy. There's no getting around. You know, everybody knew this guy. He's been there for years. And boy, when he got healed, everybody knew it. Well, that's the way it should be. Let your work shine. But now, the subject tonight is things that we do to the Father. Okay. For the purpose, secret. So let's just look at these real quick. We're going to particularly talk about fasting tonight. But let's, let's start in uh, Matthew 6, 1. Take heed, that means be careful, that you do not your alms, your giving to the poor, before men. To be seen of them. Don't make that your purpose. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue. Apparently, they really did this. They blew a trumpet in the synagogue I'm about to give to the poor. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, nowadays, you just get on TV with a six foot by eight foot by six foot check, you know. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> and in the streets. Why? What's their purpose? Well, that they may have glory of men. Well, and you'll get it, too. People will give it to you. And they say, well, you got your reward. Verily, verily, I say unto you that they have their reward. But thou, when thou doest thine alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Now, he just means keep it a secret if it's at all possible. Okay? That thy alms may be in secret. And notice, thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Well, we'll teach on the reward another night. But I'll tell you the first level. You'll feel his pleasure. On this, Sue and I, we, I, uh, I don't know how many times that we've had that testimony back to zero again. Especially in the early days. and We'd finally get a little breathing room, just a little breathing room financially. And all of a sudden, he'd lay something on our heart. How many times? Empty that bank account again. So we're driving home, you know, I'm, I'd usually try and leave $10 in there just to cover the bank fee. <laughs> you know, we're driving home again, and in the natural, you know, your lower lip should be interfering with the gas pedal, right? Like Dave says, you know. But the truth of the matter was, man, the pleasure we felt, we, we, not only did it bless the people, but man, we could feel his pleasure. And I'm telling you, that is a reward that there's, there's no substitute for that. All right, let's look at the next one. When thou prayest, verse 5, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. And again, why? That they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, you, when, you, when thou prayest, Enter into thy closet. Now, I know somebody in this church who literally has a prayer closet. Got a little uh, twin-size mattress in there. <laughs> Shuts the door and prays. Hey, glory to God. I found out by accident. They wasn't showing it off to me either. Okay. I found out by, just by accident. But that, you don't really, I don't think it's illegally you have to be in a closet. I think the point is to keep it secret. And I'll just, I'm going to prophesy by teaching, not yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. This church is called the Family Prayer Center. And it's about to really become that again. I'm telling you, we're coming into a season of intimacy. That there is no substitute for prayer. Worship, real worship. Real one-on-one. -on -one, you and the Father. That's what he's talking about here. All right. But pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, I'm, I'm going to skip over the rest of this because we're not really teaching on prayer tonight. But you see the principle. When you give, do it between you and the father. When you pray, it's between you and the father. Now, let's talk about fasting. Verse 16. Moreover, if you fast. Is that what it says? 
when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. I can't believe they really did all this stuff, but apparently they did. For they disfigure their faces. I wonder what, did they use charcoal around the eyes? Uh, you know, did they, I wonder what they did, you know. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. In other words, I'm fasting. I want all of you to know it. Yeah, again, pa I love our pastor. Don't you love Pastor Dave? He says, man, when he first started fasting, you see, I'd see a little kid going by on a tricycle. I'd want to run up right beside him while he's going and say, I love God so much I haven't eaten since three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to get a little something, you know. But that's, that's the really the wrong motive. When we fast, and let me just read it how he said it. Be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Oh, aren't you holy? Oh, you love God so much. Oh, I see you carrying around your two-gallon jugs. I know you're fasting. Pat, pat, pat. Well, you got your reward. Okay, all right. But thou, when thou fastest, when you fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Now anoint thy head today. Comb your hair, wash your face. Don't be having no charcoal. <laughs> that thou appear not unto men to fast. But notice, now this is going to be so important here in Zechariah. But unto thy father, which is in secret. Who's watching you fast? See, and for the longest time I'm going... Because I so identified with the flesh man instead of the spirit man that I really am. Fasting was hard for me. I've admitted it over all these years. You know, it was the shortest leg on my table. You know, long leg of worship, long leg of prayer. Yeah, not too good on worship. Fasting really short, you know, one inch long table leg. <laughs> really wobbly on the fasting leg. Done a lot better than that in recent years. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But I had the hardest time understanding what, what pleasure do you get out of me suffering by going without food. But see, the thing of it is, I was so identifying with the suffering part of me, which is the flesh. Now, already I know, and even before we did the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus taught real strong about, you're going to have to deal harshly with that flesh. It, it may be to the point, it may feel like you're gouging out the eye, cutting off the hand, cutting off the foot, but you've got to deal with that flesh. And about that time is when he really showed me what Paul was saying over in Corinthians about even Paul, after preaching to others, he said, if I don't keep my body under, there's a danger even I could wind up being a castaway. And that word castaway is reprobate. So there's really a lot to this fasting thing, just like Dave said all these years. Anyway, verse 18, but thou, oh, excuse me, 17, but thou when thou fastest, Comb your hair, anoint, in other words, anoint thy head, comb your hair, wash your face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And I'm just going to preview and give you, a, I'll, tell you I'll tell you one thing that I've learned in this process, and I've got a lot to learn about fasting. I'm not an expert, but I've done a lot more this last couple of years, three years, I guess, than, than we have in a long time. I'll tell you one thing. My father's enjoying watching me finally grow up. By becoming a son of his that's, hey, really has, that understands the difference between my spirit and my body. And my body may be screaming like a stuck hog. You know. But he's watching the son grow up. Start taking dominion over that thing. Said, no, you'll eat what I say and when I say. And you can holler, just like a child. You can, you can, you can cry all you want. But that's the law. He's enjoying that, watching, watching me grow up. And again, it all has to do with handles. It has to do with if God's going to really use us in revival, we cannot have big old flesh handles sticking out everywhere that the devil can just grab hold of. Anyway, that's another message. Now, go over to Mark chapter 2 just for a moment. Let me go over there with you. Mark chapter 2. So more recently, uh, I've understood that part there for a few years. And then even more recently, I have understood that Jesus was completely serious when he said that once he re, uh, ascends into heaven, once he's removed from the earth physically, that his disciples would fast. And I remember what an impact that had on me. 
because for many years, I, I, many, I've been at this a while, you know. You can, and for many years, I called myself a disciple. Yeah, I'm a disciple. Well, let's, let's compare that with Mark chapter 2 here. So, we'll pick it up in uh, verse 18. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they came and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? But now notice, but thy disciples fast not. If you underline, you ought to underline the word disciples. Disciples is the subject matter here. Your disciples, we're watching them. They're not fasting. We're fasting. We're disciples of John the Baptist. The Pharisees' disciples, they fast. But we've been watching your disciples. They're not fasting. We don't understand. So Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Now, who? Who will fast? His disciples. I remember the day that verse finally hit me right in the face like a ton of bricks. And I said, for 20 years, I've been calling myself a disciple of Jesus. And for all practical purposes, I haven't fasted enough to spit on. <laughs> That's changing. And that was about three years ago. Been doing a little better at it ever since. But if I'm going to call myself a disciple of Jesus... According to him, well, let me ask you, he said, when it, when, in the dispensation when he's been taken away, is that not now? He, physically, isn't he, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. I know he's in our heart, but physically, in his glorified body, he has been taken away. Well, this is that time. And he says, in those days, look at it. And then shall they fast in those days. Well, these are those days. So I've, I've got a, I've done better since I, since I understood that. I said, well, man, there's just no getting around that. If I'm a disciple, I fast. Now, how much? You got to work that out with the Holy Ghost. It depends somewhat on your uh, medical conditions. It depends on your duties, you know. Uh, I'm, anyway, I'm thinking a brain surgeon. I want mine to have a good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a little sugar to the brain. You know what I'm saying? I'd like a little. <laughs> but what he does when he's not working on me, that's fine. But anyway, I'm just saying you got to you got to work it out with the Holy Ghost. What what what's God's plan for you? OK, but what's not acceptable anymore is no fasting at all. That's just not acceptable. And and I know I get ridiculed a little bit and it's OK. I, I'm thick skinned because I started on a Daniel's fast. Oh, you ought to heard some of the stuff. Oh, yeah. Big suffering. You get to eat every day. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't get to have burgers or chicken. <laughs> I'm telling you, even that had an effect. My flesh didn't like it one little bit. It did not like it. And, and we actually lost some weight on it. Me and Angie, I say we, me and Angie, we started at the same time. And, but it started the discipline. But then came, you know, water fasting where you don't, and then, you know, a little bit more and a little bit more. So, just say it with me. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. These are the days when he's been taken away. And I am a faster. I do it unto my Father. And I get my reward from my Father. That's good stuff right there. Now, let's go to Zechariah, or Zeke as some call him. <laughs> Nobody calls him that. Zechariah chapter 7. And again, I'll tell you, Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Zechariah is the one right before it. Let me go there, too, because we're going to do some things in context. Now, I'm just going to look at the verse first that just, I mean, it just, like, come off the page at me. This is during the time of the 70-year um, captivity when they were captive in Babylon. And uh, they're, I don't know exactly where it is. If I studied more, I'd know how long it'd been. But they're in that captivity period. And just to catch you up a little bit, they've been doing a fast 
on the, I think it's the fifth month and the seventh month. But anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. But th they're coming to the priest asking, do we need to continue doing this fast? We've been doing it for, you remember, they were there for 70 years. You remember that? Do we need to continue doing this or, or not? And uh, <laughs> the answer the Lord gives them is not at all what they were expecting. So let's just pick it up in Zechariah 7. Let's, look at, let's just look at verse 5. Verse 4. <laughs> then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, that's the prophet, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, when you fasted, and he's talking about these fasts they've been doing every year that they've been there. When you fasted and mourned, yeah, it is, in the fifth and seventh month. Even though 70 years, now get this. Actually, I think this is at the end of that time. But anyway, did you at all fast unto me? And notice, even to me. And I wondered in the Hebrew if the construction was really that way. Because that's strong, isn't it? It is. It's that way. Did you fast unto me? Even to me? Let me read it to you out of the Amplified. Z speak to all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months, even though 70 years, so apparently this is after that 70 year period, I'm sorry. So apparently they were asking, should we continue this fasting now that the 70 year? Well, he doesn't even, to him it's almost irrelevant. What's relevant to the Father? Let's talk about the kind of fasting you did. Even though 70 years you were in exile, was it for, now this is amplified, it's the closest to the Hebrew. Was it for me that you fasted? For me? It's actually in there twice. Oh my goodness. I'm not big on commentaries, but uh, on this one, Matthew Henry did a pretty good job. You care if I read you a couple, few paragraphs from Matthew Henry? He said, they had not an eye to God in their fasting. The question is, did you at all fast unto me, even to me? He is appealing to their own conscience. They will witness against them that they had not been sincere in it. Much more will God, who is greater than the heart and knows all things. God's really telling them, you know, you know full well you did not at all fast to me. In fasting, did you fast to me? There was the form of duty. In other words, he's not saying they didn't do it. But there was none of the life and soul and power in it that there should have been. So he said, was it to me? Even to me? Now, the repetition intimates what a great deal of stress is laid upon this in the main matter. In not only fasting, but in all of the holy exercises that he had them do. That they be done to God. Even to him. With an eye to his word. As the rule. And notice, and his glory as our end. In everything we do, seeking to please him and to obtain his favor. And studious by the sincerity of our intention to approve ourselves to him. When this is wanting, every fast, he says, is but a jest. To God, it's just a joke. I, let's think about the ones that were doing it to be seen of men. God's going, I don't even count that a fast. They're, they're not doing that for me. They're, they're not doing that to grow up as sons and take authority over their flesh. They're doing it just to be seen of men and to get glory of men. God doesn't even count that as a fast. He doesn't even notice it. That's what he's telling them. You'll see why here in a minute. So Matthew Henry says, to fast... And to not fast to God was to mock him and provoke him. And it could not be pleasing to him. Those that make fasting a cloak for sin, like Jezebel. Did you know she fasted? <laughs> or by it they make 
their court to men for their applause like the Pharisees? Or those that rest in outward expressions of humiliation while their hearts remain unhumbled? Or that, okay, I read that. Such as Ahab. Did you all know Ahab fasted? The most wicked king Israel ever had. But he fasted. So did Jezebel. Is this the fast that God has chosen? <laughs> Remind, that's from Isaiah 58 verse 5. How many remember Dave methodically teaching us? Is this the fast I have chosen? Is not this the fast? If the seriousness of our fasting, even though it's frequent, long, and severe, if that fasting does not serve to put an edge upon our devout affections, in other words, something between us and God, or to crooken prayer, or to increase godly sorrow, and to alter the temper of our minds and the course of our lives for the better, they do not at all answer the intention, and God will not accept them as performed to him, even to him. So if we couple this up with the thinking in Matthew 6, where he says, in your giving, in your praying, in your fasting, this is something between you and your father. Do you know he, he delights? I think the, I was telling you the joy that we had when we're back to zero and we, we emptied out our bank account again and just delivered somebody that was right on the brink more than once. You know, they were just really in serious trouble. And we, when we left, they weren't in trouble anymore. Well, we had joy. But you know who else had joy? Our father had joy. And he got to participate in that. And it was something that we did. But it's between us and, and him. And we always would tell him, don't tell anybody where this comes from, you know. They had to know. <laughs> but we weren't doing it for anybody to be saved. We did it for the, just the love of God. See? And this fasting is supposed to be the same way. Now, you're still in Zeke? You're still in Zechariah? <laughs> All right. Let's go back to there just for a moment. Let, let's talk about what he thought they should have done while they were fasting. If they were really fasting unto him. <clears throat> so. All right. I'm going to read those two verses again. Now remember they had come to ask, should we keep doing this fasting? Well, basically God's saying, well, not if you're going to do it the way you've done it before. It doesn't matter whether you do it or whether you don't do it because you weren't doing it out of a, to me anyway, right? Is that the way you read it? It's the way I read it. So he says, I'm going to read it again. So then came, verse 4, Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When you fasted, and mourned in the fifth and seven months, even though seventy years, did you at all fast unto me, even to me? And when you did eat, and when you did drink, did not you eat for yourselves, and drink for yourselves? Now, hold, can you hold your place there? Hold your place there. I'm going to show you a New Testament counterpart to that verse. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. In other words, what he's really saying there, listen, you had yourselves on your mind when you were fasting. You had yourselves on your mind when you were eating. <laughs> God's talking to them like for real. He's, he's, this, he's talking to them straight. Look, you didn't have me on your mind when you was fasting. You didn't have me on your mind when you was eating. Is that plain? That's, now look at this. So he says here in Zechariah, when you did eat and when you did drink, did not you eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Look at 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Wherefore, well, excuse me, whether, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Man, if I ever get that, my diet is changed. There are things that I eat, trust me, that does not bring glory to God. <laughs> the amount does not bring glory to God. I'm getting a lot better at that. But what he's... And even like, uh, who was it? Uh, Alan or, or somebody mentioned even today that there might be times, you know, if me eating meat would offend that weak believer over there. Well, my eating needs to bring glory to God. I'm not going to offend my brother by eating meat if it offends him. I'm not going to do it in his presence, you know, make him stumble. So even when we eat and we do, whether we fast... The point is whether we fast or whether we eat, we're supposed to do both to the glory of God. And that, look at 1031. Whether you eat or drink 
Or how about, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. See, and really this all goes back to the Sermon on the Mount, the basic principle. We are not on this planet for God to serve us. We are on this planet for us to serve God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We are here on temporary assignment from heaven for the Father's will to be done through the body. And we are to find our place in the body and let him do that through us. Amen? Okay. All right, back to Zechariah. So verse 6, he's saying, listen, you didn't have me on your mind when you was fasting. You didn't have me on your mind when you was eating either. <laughs> now here's what he's, but he starts giving them counsel in verse 7. Should you not hear the wor words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets? Now he's talking about before the captivity. In other words, I kept sending you prophets. You didn't have to go into that captivity in the first place. You should have listened to the word of the Lord then. When Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain, in other words, back before that judgment ever came, if you'd have listened to the prophets then, it wouldn't have ever even happened. Verse 8, And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah speaking. Here's, here's those words. So he's repeating again to them now, so it doesn't, so hopefully they won't come into judgment again, what the prophets were telling them before. Because God doesn't change. So he says, <clears throat> verse 9, Thus speaking the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Gosh, that almost sounds New Testament, doesn't it? <laughs> Love thy brother as thyself. Love one another as I have loved you. Love is the fulfilling of the law. It's a precursor to that. Verse 11, but they refused. See, this is why they went into judgment in the first place. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. That, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the, and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Boy, this verse here. <laughs> Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried, now that's, he, that's God crying unto them by the voice of the prophets. As he cried, and they would not hear. So later, they cried. And I would not hear. Saith the Lord of hosts. Isn't that strong? Good. Verse 14. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them. That no man passed through nor returned for the for they, they laid the pleasant land desolate. He says they did it. And how did they do it? Rebellion. Disobedience. Prophet after prophet after prophet. Repent. Repent. Right now what's going on in the church at large, and we're just a small voice. I mean, it's, but there's many voices worldwide in the church today telling the church to repent. It is in di a direct opposition to the false grace Greasy grace, ooey gooey love message <laughs> that God is only love and it's only, you know, ooey gooey all the time. Uh, God is love. Any parent knows real love is not always ooey gooey. <laughs> Any real parent knows. Y'all remember, the, you know, the time that Lily, when she was just, I don't know, three or four, my granddaughter. I'm sitting on the front porch, and Papa doesn't move as fast as Papa used to. She's just playing, not four feet from me, just playing. And she gave me this funny look. I don't know why. She gave me this little look and a grin, a twinkle. Turns around, and them little short legs was booking it towards the road. <laughs> and we got, there's cars. Our street's pretty busy. There's cars. Man, Papa come off of that chair, you know. Not, I'd like to think I look like a gazelle, but I look like a lumbering elephant probably. I, the, 
And I, I grabbed her by the arm just as her feet was leaving the curb, getting ready to go off into that street. Man, I had her, had her by the arm in my left hand. Now, to, to, today, I probably shouldn't tell this because <laughs> today be, I'm whacking her on the behind. Don't you ever <laughs> run into that street again, you know. And don't tell me that's not love. Amen. That is love. I'm trying to save her life. Not, but she loves her papa to this day. You know, she knows her papa loves her. Give me none of your stuff. But anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, I got, a, I, got a, I got a round file cabinet for all that. It's right, right by my desk. A lot, lots of stuff goes in that file cabinet. We have to empty it pretty regular. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this fasting, you know, what's he's really saying here? He's saying, you know, what I'd really like is for you to fast the world and listen to my word. Can you tell that's what he's saying? What, what good is fasting if you're not going to hearken to what I say? Reminds me, go all the way back again to the Sermon on the Mount. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? That's, he's saying the same thing all the way back here in Zechariah. He says, you're the ones that made the land desolate through your disobedience. I sent you prophet after prophet after prophet trying to get you to repent. You just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. And finally, I, he's not... He's also justice. Remember, Dave would teach on the attributes of God, and one of, his, one of his attributes that's immutable and he can't change is judgment and justice. So that's why Jesus had to die. He couldn't just forgive us. A price had to be paid. Somebody had to pay. Well, somebody did. His name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I brought this. Tim sent me... Uh, some excerpts, and I don't know if I'll have permission to post this at the website. Uh, this is a little, just a little over a page, a little bit on the second page. I want you to hear this, because we're talking about pleasing the Father. These things that we do in secret, giving, praying, and fasting between you and your Father. These are things that you guys, that we do together with Him. But it's really personal. It's you and Him, you know. And I'm telling you, it's some of the best times of our life has been in those secret things where we just do it and God gets enjoyment and we get... Now, you're the natural part of you goes back to zero again, oh, brother. But can you tell that he's taking care of us? You can tell I haven't missed too many meals, right? Okay. He, he provides. So Tim, he did this, he has this uh, software that somebody did where he's able to do... Uh, word searches and he did a thing on pleasure from the father's perspective from the prophecies these are all through Dave and there's probably more than just what's on this page here but man just l let me read let me share this with you and if, if 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 it's okay then we'll put a PDF of this at the website okay these are excerpts from Dave Roberson prophecies all of these came through Dave the main line of the foundation of the apostles was the understanding of who you became in Christ. And I did not send my spirit to lead and guide you into all truth and to expand. No, I'm sorry. And did I not send my spirit to lead and guide you into all truth and to expound and cause you to understand and bring things back to remembrance that I may teach you. For the reason that my church is in the condition that it is in, and he's talking worldwide, not just here, is because they do not understand their foundation or who they are in me. Therefore, for many generations, many of my children have had nothing but sand to build their lives and ministries and their walks upon. Nothing but sand. False doctrine. Okay. But I would say to you that as soon as in any generation I find any of my servants who will hear my voice and adopt the Holy Spirit as their teacher, I have many things to say. For I will raise them up and they will not take the glory for it will not be the man, but it will be my message, says the Lord. They will give me all the glory that I will begin change. For in every generation, whoever would hear me, 
I would start the same thing over and over again. For as you know from the writings of those who went before you, that they would understand. I think he's talking about the Smith Wigglesworths, the A.W. Tozers. You could go on back, you know. They would understand. And then the generation after would lose the understanding. Then they would understand again. Well, I am lining up for a great move, says the Lord. Be strong and be of good cheer. For it is the Father's good pleasure to place you in the center of it. Just a minute. <laughs> My feet. <laughs> Do you hear that? Kelly, it's your Father's good pleasure to put you. And I could look at every eyes. And I can look at every eye here. To put you in the center of it. Good. I want, don't you want that? I want that. Okay. Now, even though from generation to generation, I have been able to visit and get so far past the foundation, it is very seldom that I get to expound on the love of money being the root of all evil. Now, isn't that interesting? Very, very few times I have been able to establish the slave, and in context, financial servant. The one path he made many times, but the path where men totally freed themselves from the love of money as the root of all evil was very far and very few between. There have been very few ever able to get free of that. The father wants to express that he is extremely pleased that both of these paths have found their way out of here. Talking about the prayer center. He was very pleased at the two things that turn revival. He is able to esta establish a path out of them. And he wants you to know that he is extremely pleased. Last paragraph. <clears throat> Sue, take up an offering right here. We <laughs> this is just too good, I'm telling you. It is the Father's good pleasure to pick you up out of your tests and trials. And to comfort you. And to strengthen you. He takes pleasure in that. But oh he receives great pleasure. When you are to the place. Where you do not have to be picked up. You don't have to be picked up. To release that kind of fellowship in his presence. In other words. You get into his presence. Not because you're in such a terrible trial. You get into his presence just because you want to. See, I like to be in Sue's presence. Not just when I'm in trouble. <laughs> I just like to be in her presence. Well, he likes for us to want to be in his presence. I'm telling you, intimacy is the call of the day. And you're not going to have real intimacy without repentance. The two just go, go hand in hand. But anyway. Hmm. He receives great pleasure when you are to the place where you do not have to be picked up to release that kind of fellowship in his presence. But that you can release it before. Or in the middle of anything. Before the trial, in the middle of the trial. Because your fellowship has come to that place with him. And he said he likes that place better. Now. As a parent, uh, raised three daughters, all of them different as they can be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change one. I just love them all. But uh, we have, we've had fellowship over the years in good times and bad times, you know. And, uh, boy, if they're in trouble, you know, and of course, now they're married and got husbands, and, and that's different. But when they were younger, of course, if they're in trouble, man, I don't want them running from me. I want them running to me. I, I, you know, I want to help. And I, I, I want that fellowship. But boy, what's even better than that? What he's saying? Hey, Dad, I made an extra cinnamon roll. Sorry, this is <laughs> when I could still eat them. <laughs> Thought you might like to have this cinnamon roll. And you really want to just come over and visit. Oh, no, that's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. It's not, not because there's an emergency, not because there's a trial, not because anything's going on. Daddy, can I just come spend some time with you? Oh, oh. 
you have made my day. And just know when we want to go into his presence and just pray, get into his word, even fast. And I love, don't forget the message a week or so ago, God's to-do list. Boy, if he lays it on your heart to give somebody some money, little or big, doesn't matter. I'm telling you, just obey that. Do it simply. And man, the reward is more than you could possibly buy with what, whatever that was. He loves that kind of fellowship. So say it with me. I don't do anything for the glory of man. I don't do anything to be seen of people. Everything I do. How does it, even when I eat, when I drink, and whatever I do, I do everything for the glory of God. And I love to spend time in His presence just because I love to spend time in His presence. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Fasting for the Father. Fasting for the Father. And I'll know more about it next year than I know now. But I know a lot more about it now than I did a few years ago. Say it with me one more time. I am a disciple. These are the days when the bridegroom has been taken away. I'm a disciple. And I fast. There you go. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go ahead and start the confessions now. I know some people probably need to leave. Can't stay. And if you do, that's okay. And just repeat after me. Say, Father, I worship you. I glorify you. And I praise you. You're not a man that you could lie. You have exalted your word above your name. Heaven and earth will pass away. But your word will never pass away. Therefore I say. Your glory is present at the prayer center. The blind see. The deaf hear. The lame walk. The dead are raised, and the poor, they have the gospel preached to them. A minimum of a thousand people are born again at the prayer center every week. We have a minimum of 500 intercessors who are holding up the message that has come to maturity. We are able to get along with each other while the Father works revival in our midst. We have that kind of worship. That takes us beyond the veil of the flesh. In order that we may worship. In spirit and in truth. We worship you Father out of our new nature. And we give you family worship as your sons and daughters. Father at the prayer center, those that come will see a people transformed to the nature of Christ. Father, we say, in the name of Jesus, no person ever leaves the prayer center the same way they came. Every person that comes receives a touch from the Good Shepherd. Father, those that come who are beaten down, discouraged, worn out, and tired, they won't leave that way. They'll be encouraged, strong, and mature. They'll leave standing upright, their shoulders squared, their heads held high, going forth as a mighty army to take this planet for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Father, your glory fills every service. Every person that comes drinks of your glory. They'll leave as earthen vessels filled with your glory. Filled with your wisdom. Filled with your love. Filled with your grace. And anointed by your spirit. They'll carry your presence with them. And they'll carry revival around this world. Father, we declare 
We preach your gospel. We'll never settle for man's gospel. Only yours. It's the gospel that saves, the gospel that fills, and the gospel that heals. That's why we say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Blind, see. Lame, walk. Deaf, hear. Maimed, be whole. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's your gospel. And we'll settle for nothing less. We're going for the gold. We have what we say. And we say at every service. The lost are saved. People are filled with the Holy Ghost. The blind see. The lame walk. The deaf hear. The maimed are made whole. And the dead are raised. In the name of Jesus. More than 12 legions of angels. Are loosed. To prepare the way for revival. Angels are dispatched. To the four corners of the earth. Intercepting and stopping. Every mission and every assignment of the enemy. That would bring circumstances against those who would come. Angels are changing those circumstances by rearranging them, causing money to come, and by changing schedules. We say every person that is to be here will be here in the name of Jesus. There is no devil big enough, no assignment crafty enough. No circumstances bad enough that will keep even one from being here. Father, we declare your house full. Angels are moving back. The forces of darkness over this region. They're opening up a window. A window of light. 25 miles in every direction both horizontally and vertically. There is a fortress of angels surrounding us to keep back the darkness. Father, angels are dispatched now, softening the hearts where hurts have wounded, where calluses have formed, where walls of defenses have gone up. Angels are softening the hearts and creating atmospheres where the people can hear the voice of their shepherd. Angels are preparing their hearts now. So they're already receivers when they arrive. From the first word spoken. From the first song sung. From the first prayer prayed. To the end of every service. The people are free to receive from your spirit. The assignments of all devils against the prayer center. The people of the prayer center. And the leadership of the prayer center. All those assignments are dismissed. In the name of Jesus. I declare those plans null and void. Devil. We're taking Tulsa from you. In fact, we already have. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Not you. We're in authority here. Not you. Devil, get out of Tulsa. Take all your demons with you. The King of Kings has made a decree. And I am speaking in his stead. The king has declared, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. The king has decreed, captives, you are free. Every person returns to his original inheritance. 
That is the born again trail. Father, you have restored our inheritance. And at the prayer center, the inheritance is not just known about. We don't just teach about it. But it's received, manifested, and seen. Father, you have restored our fellowship with you. The firstborn told us to pray. Father, your will be done on earth. Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven. So on earth. As in heaven. So in Tulsa. There are no lost people in heaven. Therefore we say. Tulsa is saved. There are no sick people in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is healed. There are no demoniacs in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is delivered. And there's no poor people in heaven. Therefore we say, Tulsa is prospered. And Tulsa is blessed. We declare, oh now see this, we declare every captive free. Every wheelchair empty. All of them. No exceptions. Every artificial help. Wheelchairs. Crutches. Canes. Hearing aids. Glasses. Stretchers. Bladder bottles. They may need them when they come. They won't need them when they leave. And we'll have them here as trophies. To the glory of Jesus the healer. All manner of sickness and all manner of diseases are healed first time, every time, all of them, no exceptions. Jesus, you healed them all then. You healed them all now. That's what we say. That's what we have in the name of Jesus. Father, there are impartations of your Spirit. We declare these are the most powerful, the most anointed, the most life-changing, the most revival-producing services in history. Fresh anointings, fresh giftings, like never before since the book of Acts. Father, it's you doing the works. Therefore, all things are possible. So, my own soul, I command you, believe this. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Things are possible. And every backslider will come back to God. They will never leave God again. So now, Father, in preparation, I forgive every person their trespasses against me. Father, forgive me all of my trespasses against you. I am freshly washed in the blood of the Lamb in order that my record in heaven be perfect. Therefore, I say, because of the blood, what Jesus did for me, according to my record in heaven, I have never failed God. I lay down my life that the life of Christ may be manifest in me. I take no offense. I give no offense. And according to my record in heaven, I never have. At the prayer center... The mind of Christ is delivered to both the sheep and the shepherds. It's delivered with such simplicity and with such clarity that the wayfaring fool could not misunderstand it. Therefore, I say, the people at the prayer center, and especially me, we all understand every word that Pastor Dave teaches. And we declare that Pastor Dave teaches. 
Every need is met. No matter how large. No matter how small. There are no cases too hard. There are no cases too late. And whatever they come for to receive from Jesus, they get it, all of them, first time, every time, no exceptions. I declare every captive free. Free in spirit, free in soul, free in body, all are delivered, all are restored. Father, you are provider. Angels are dispatched to gather in all of the finances and everything that is required. Things we know about now, things we don't even know about yet, because you are the God who answers before we call. I speak against the strongholds of lack, and I declare in abundance. Abundance be in the name of Jesus. Therefore we say there is no lack. We operate from abundance. We operate from surplus. We have all in abound with many baskets left over. We have such abundance. We can pay the way for many to come and many to go. And we send them out on prosperous journeys for God with abundance in a manner fitting for servants of the Lord. Our financial granaries are full because our king has found stewards he can trust. And I'm one of them. Father, if you need anything, don't go to Mark's house first. <laughs> Come to my house first. Whatever you have need of, all I need to know is my Lord has need of it. And it's yours. I've been bought with a price. My li it's okay to go to Mark's, Father. Okay. okay, my life is not my own. <laughs> I am a first-class servant. Lord, I lay all my possessions at your feet. See, I don't normally see this right at this point, but I just saw the rich young ruler. That's really exactly what the Lord asked him to do. There's a cartoon at a certain page of my website, and uh, a man's about to be baptized. And the preacher says to him, you know, they're standing there in the river, and they're both getting ready, and the, the pastor's standing there, and the, the man is standing there. And the pastor says to the man, Everything that goes under the water belongs to God. The next thing you see is the man under the water and his arm is sticking up holding his wallet out. <laughs> That's not okay. We're going to be his steward. And all... That's exactly what he asked the rich man. The rich, that, rich young, that young rich ruler. He said, go sell all that you have. Give to the poor. And you'll have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Was he called? Is come and follow me? Is he called? Couldn't do it though. I pray that we can. I pray that we can. Not just in our heart. I pray that we can. It's all hit. Well, we've been back to zero a bunch of times already. But, but we never had to leave our house. We never had to. Well, once. Anyway, <laughs> that was a different thing. Though. Okay, back to this. I just saw it. I lay, Lord, I, if you need anything I have, I lay all of my possessions at your feet. And I saw that rich young ruler when basically Jesus asked him to do that very thing. And he couldn't do it. That's not us, is it? That is not us. I love you, Lord, with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, all of my strength. The second commandment is like unto the first. I love my neighbor as myself, and I love my brother as you have loved me. I love my good neighbors. I love my bad neighbors. I love my mean neighbors, and I love my enemies. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. 
Whatever you ask, that's what I do. I am your servant, and I am your bond slave by my own free will choice. And I serve you, Lord, by serving these people that you love so much. I serve the good people. I serve the bad people. I serve the mean people. And I especially serve your enemies because you're trying to save them all. You'd like to use me to do it. All that I have is yours. My time is yours. My body is yours. My family is yours. I own nothing. I am your bond slave. Use me as you will. You are provider for me. My family and all that I have. And I am available for your use. We lift up the blood-stained banner over this city. Written in the blood of Jesus on the banner are these words. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Jesus is Lord over Tulsa. Tulsa is in revival. Tulsa is in revival. And where Jesus is Lord, the Father's will is done. Father, have your way. Not just 30-fold, not just 60-fold, but 100-fold. Again, I say, lost, be saved. Empty, be filled. Captives, go free. Blind, see. Deaf, hear. Lame, walk. Maimed, be whole. Dead, rise again. In the name of Jesus. Father, thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. Forever, your will be done in Tulsa. Just as it is in heaven. As in heaven... So in earth, as in heaven, so in Tulsa. Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Tulsa is saved. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We have what we say in the name of Jesus. We have what we say. Glory to God. Father, every word that we have spoken shall come to pass exactly as we have said it in Jesus' name. We believe in our heart and doubt not what we say shall come to pass. Therefore, we have whatsoever we say. Hallelujah. Glory. I got red letters to back that up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, extend your faith and maybe your hand this way. Oh, Father, we love you so much. Father, regarding these pictures, these faces on this prayer box, Lord, every one of these is an impossible case according to the world system. The, the very best of doctors, they have nothing to offer at all. But, Father, there is nothing impossible with you. We're not praying again for these because we know that you heard us the first time. Jesus told us to believe we receive when we pray, and we shall have it. Father, we know you heard us. That means we shall see the miracle on each and every one of these people in Jesus' name. And Father, for the prayer requests inside this box, and we know they're added to almost daily. Father, your word tells us that if we ask anything that's according to your will, we know that you hear us. And our confidence is if you hear us, then we know that we have the petition that we desire of you. Father... We're just thanking you for answering every prayer that Jesus paid the price for them to have. And if a stranger had enough faith to send a prayer request here, a stranger, excuse me, a stranger meaning someone who's not yet born again, not yet in the family, not in the kingdom. Doesn't matter if they're atheistic, agnostic, Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, or anything else. If they had enough faith to send a prayer request here in your name, and if that request is in line with your word, Father, we ask like Solomon asked, answer the prayer of the stranger. Father, do it in such a unique and unusual way. They'll have to know it was you that answered that prayer. 
so they can know like we already know that you're the only true and living God and they can hear the gospel of your son and be saved in Jesus name Father, we pray for every prayer cloth that goes forward from this place. You have not changed at all. You're the same God today that you were in the book of Acts. That's why we expect the same results. When those cloths are laid, cloths are laid on the sick, they will recover. When they're laid on people that have devils, the devils will come out. Now that means alcoholics will be delivered. Drug addicts will be delivered. All manner of mental disease they'll be set free from instantly. You'll put marriages back together Turn the hearts of the children to the parents and the parents to the children. Bring wayward children home and many other such things. Because you have not changed at all and you're the same God today that you were then. Father, it's so good to see Pastor Dave in, in the church today. Father, we just lift up Pastor Dave and Rosalie and all of their house. Tim and Leah Stemple and all of their house. Father, all of the ministers and their families, not only here but around the world that have linked arms with this message. Father, the staff, the volunteers, the congregations, all of them, Lord. And we declare no weapon formed against any of them will prosper. But everything they set their hand to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, last but not least, we're facing another week. We have hours, same hours available to us as any king or any president. Father, help us steward our hours. It is so easy to get caught up in the cares of this world and the, just the things that need to be done. It's so easy, Lord. Good intentions don't count at all. Help us, Lord, steward our time. Someday we're going to stand in front of you and give an accounting of how we stewarded this life. Father, when we do, we want to have the same testimony as the Apostle Paul. Father, we kept the faith. We finished the race that you set in front of us. Father, we, here at the prayer center, we know what that race is, and it is revival. Father, we're fighting the good fight. And our pledge to you, Father, you will have your revival. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says... Amen, amen. I'm running a little bit over, but let's, let's, do, uh, let's do at least some of these confessions over Pastor Dave. I'm still looking for the day. I'm telling you, it is not blowing smoke. I think the day will come, and I think sooner than later, Pastor Dave is going to walk in with that twinkle in his eye and that clear, clear mind. He's going to walk right up here. I'm hoping I'm, hoping I'm the one doing the service. And where he just walks up and says, okay, Gary, you can sit down now. I'll take it from here. Boy, I'm looking forward to that. Dave 2.0. More revelation than ever and funnier than ever. <laughs> I want my funny pastor back. Hallelujah. Tim said the Dave's humor are the enzymes that help us digest the meat of the word, you know. So just say with me, Dave blesses the Lord with all of his soul and with all that is within him. He blesses the Lord and forgets not all of his benefits. The Lord forgives all of Dave's iniquities and heals all of his diseases. Dave's life is redeemed from destruction and he is crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. Dave is satisfied with good things and his youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord lit Dave's candle and has enlightened his darkness. The Lord causes him to run through a troop and leap over a wall. The Lord girds Dave with strength and makes his way perfect. The Lord makes him able to stand firmly and to make progress on the dangerous heights of testing and trials. The Lord sets Dave firmly upon the high places. places. The Lord teaches Dave's hands to war. The Lord is his shield of salvation. The Lord's right hand holds Dave up. His gentleness has made Dave great. And the Lord causes Dave's feet to not slip. 
Dave pursues his spiritual enemies and overtakes them. He does not stop until his enemies are consumed. Dave's enemies are wounded and not able to rise. They are fallen under his feet. The Lord has girded Dave with strength for the battle. The Lord has subdued those that rose up against Dave. Great deliverance has the Lord given to Dave. The Lord shows great mercy to his anointed. Dave Roberson. Dave has a sound mind full of love and power. Free from fear. Free from torment. Dave is in constant fellowship with the Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit, who teaches him all truth and shows him things to come. Dave has the mind of Christ. And he has access to all wisdom. Dave accurately discerns all things. And the Holy Spirit brings to his remembrance all things which the Lord has spoken unto him. Dave is a steward of the mysteries of God. And he remembers every revelation he has received. The Lord himself causes Dave's mind to articulate and to hear clearly all the days of his life. The Lord himself causes Dave's health to be in place and for his clothes and provision to always be more than enough. We join in with Dave and take authority over his mind and we speak to his soul every day saying, We command you to be sound and healthy. In the name of Jesus, you are not permitted to lose memories. Never. In Jesus' name. Dave continually walks in the peace of God. Dave shall end up full of years and full of days. Dave receives, <clears throat> excuse me, Dave receives from the Lord peace and joy with no fear to the end of his days. Dave shall go home fat with reward and shouting the victory every minute. Dave is leading the charge into revival. The revival of truth, soundness of mind and sanity. A revival so grounded in sound that the finest minds will evaluate and say, Your God must be God. Lord, we glorify and magnify you. We rejoice in your presence. You are our freedom. You are our answer. Now let's praise him. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, you hear the cry of your people. You are, the, you are the high priest of our confession, Lord. Lord, we thank you that everything that's been spoken here tonight shall come to pass exactly as it has been spoken. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you agree with that, you can say, Amen. Amen.